Hello everybody, welcome back. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos. It really helps the channel a lot. You can always check out the Wizard Playlist videos up here in the icon or by clicking the link in the description. Remember, new videos come out every Sunday morning. And if you have gained anything from these videos, your donations are much appreciated. I have a PayPal link in the description where you can donate or use the super thanks, although PayPal is better. Uh, they don't take as much from me. But I really appreciate it. And we're going to continue today on how to get some power. So here we are in the fourth driver video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to increase our power, increase your distance. So stay tuned. Before we go over the exact motions, though, that we need to increase our power, first we're going to delve a little bit into some math and science, particularly physics. So to better understand, I think it's important to understand a little bit of the math behind it so we have a clearer vision of exactly what we're trying to accomplish in order to increase uh, our, our power, uh, our strength specifically how to increase the energy delivered to the golf ball. You all know that club head speed relates to distance. Specifically though, what's happening in the golf swing is we're taking potential energy that is stored in our muscles and that we get from the ground, and we're converting that potential energy into kinetic energy of the club head. And the greater the kinetic energy of the club head, the greater the energy will be transferred through a collision into the golf ball from the collision of the club head into the golf ball. So we want to maximize our distance. We really need to maximize the kinetic energy of the club head through impact. And kinetic energy is dependent on the equation one half mass times velocity squared. So we want to increase the kinetic energy of something. We either have to increase its mass or increase the velocity. In this case, we're not going to be able to increase the mass, so we're going to focus on increasing the velocity. Furthermore, the velocity gets squared in kinetic energy, so any input is going to have a square result. It means it gets multiplied times itself. So we're really going to focus on increasing the velocity. And the velocity of an object is going to be dependent on the distance that it travels and the time that it takes it, specifically the distance divided by the time it takes it to move through that distance. So if we want to increase our kinetic energy, specifically we want to increase the club head speed, or the velocity that the club head is traveling at impact. How are we going to do that? In order to increase the velocity, we have to do one of two things because the velocity is going to be dependent on the distance that the club head travels and the time that it takes it to travel that distance. So if we want to increase the velocity, we either have to increase the distance that it travels or decrease the time. It's not going to be likely that we can increase the distance that it travels much. We may be limited to how far we can move it. And what we're really going to focus on is decreasing the time that it takes to get from the top of your swing down to the ball. If we decrease the time, we will increase the velocity. So to swing faster, you cannot think swing harder. You have to think swing faster. You have to be able to move from this position into your impact position as fast as possible. The faster you can get from here to here, the quicker the club head is going to travel. So I know everybody wants to get 20, 30 yards or more out of their driver. And for a lot of you, that's possible. That's going to be possible through a combination of three different things, good technique, strength, and flexibility. If you want to hit the golf ball better, harder, swing faster, you're going to need a combination of those three things. A good technique, as we've discussed in the other videos, is going to allow you to hit the ball squarely and transfer maximum energy into the golf ball. That means a relatively straight path with a square club base. Strength, working out, doing some push-ups, lifting some weights, hitting the gym a little bit, is going to allow you to withstand the forces when you start moving that club that fast. You can never swing it faster than your body can withstand. So if you want to swing it faster, you're going to have to work out a little bit. And getting some flexibility, maybe doing a little bit of yoga, some, some golf exercises, practicing stretching these muscles for rotation, your back, doing some lower body stretches, some lower back stretches, some back stretches, some shoulder stretches, just increasing your flexibility so that you can turn a little bit better. So the combination of those three things is going to allow you to hit the ball very hard and very powerfully. Strength, flexibility, and good technique. Those things together will allow you to smash the golf ball. As I mentioned earlier, the majority of our strength comes from our legs. The arms are just not that strong. 
They are fast, however, if we add the body to it. It's the difference between throwing a jab, which is just using the arm, and the cross, which uses the body. When you use the body and rotate through the body, we can use that energy and throw it into the arm and extend out to, for a more powerful punch. The cross punch is much more powerful than just throwing a jab. So we gain that potential energy from the ground through the legs. Your arms are just, they're not as strong as the legs. The legs are what carrying you around all day. They have the strength. It's what's connecting you to the ground. And I'm sure that you can get a lot more distance if you learn to use your lower body a lot. Most golfers think about the swing is the belt up. Most golfers aren't even aware of what's happening below the belt, how their legs are moving, how their feet are interacting with the ground. They're just thinking about swinging from the, from the top down. But if you really want to start swinging powerfully, you're going to have to use your lower body and activate your legs as a part of your swing, as a part of your attack. When you can do that, then you will untap and unleash potential that you didn't even know you had. And that's going to involve squatting into the ground at some point in your swing. I explained earlier that to get power in our golf swing, we have to use the potential energy from the ground, load up into our muscles, and then release that potential energy as rotational kinetic energy from into the hips. We want to push up from the ground, especially off of the lead side, for me, that's my left side. I want to use the ground to push up and turn my hips around. So I'm using an upward thrust to turn that into rotational energy, which then captures my upper body into my lats, into my arm, and then extending through my arm into the hand and then through the shaft and then into the club head. So I really want to use the ground. The more that I get the ground, the faster I can turn. If I were to just turn like this, you see, that's just not very fast. It's not that powerful, but if I incorporate my legs, I can really sling my arm out there using the power of the ground as an upward rotational thrust. So you really want to use your legs. Your legs is where your real power is going to come from. Yes, the arms do provide some strength, but the legs are what's really driving and stabilizing your golf swing. Once we get the lower body moving, we want the upper body to be able to brace for impact, to be able to withstand the forces of the club as it's coming into the back of the ball. And I explained earlier how we're going to have to stop our rotation, decelerate, break, in order to let the club come back and square through impact. Oftentimes, when we swing, it's very easy to get to the top of your swing, wherever that may be, and once the club is hinged, in somewhat of a 90 degree angle or more. But when it's hinged like this, it's very easy to move the club down at the ball like this to just pull your hands where the club is still hinged. And if we still hinge the club and we turn down at the ball, the club face is just laid open. I can never close the club face like that. It just won't close. And then we try to throw the, close the club face many times by casting it and throwing and extending like this, which exacerbates a slice move. So we're pulling down with the handle towards the ball and throwing the club out, looking much like this, this motion, like fishing. That's why they call it casting. It's like fishing, like casting a lure. Instead, what we want to do is rotate down through the ball and stop and allow that club to catch up and slap the ball. So essentially, I want to move from the top of my swing, wherever that would be, and get into my impact position and brace there and allow the club to catch up to me and then hit the ball. So the faster I can do that, the faster the club will go. If I move from the top of my swing very slowly into my impact position and then stop, the club moves very slowly. If I do it a bit faster from this position and then spin towards the ball and stop, that's quite a bit more acceleration. If I go from the top of my swing here 
and then move down at the ball a little bit even faster, move to my impact position even faster, then that's even, that's much quicker there. And I'm essentially just moving from this position into my impact position, embracing here, holding back on the left hand to allow the club to finish. If I keep dragging forward, you see this is more of a wavy type swing and not really slapping the ball with the club like that. This waving swing is not gonna be nearly as powerful as that slap swing. And that to get that club to release through impact using the lever, we have to stop and apply pressure essentially this way so that this handle, in order to get the club to go that way, the handle has to go backwards when the fulcrum is, you know, the fulcrum is going to be about where your right finger is for a driver, your forefinger here. So when I pull on that handle, when I pull the handle up as I go or backwards and move it backwards towards the target, that throws the club into the ball. I think you can see how that works. So to help do that, it's helpful to start applying the brakes it feels like applying the brakes, but really you're moving the handle back towards you to get the club head to square up. So the feeling I have in the golf swing very much feels like it's three pieces. It's not just backswing and downswing. It's backswing, preparation, and then drive or follow through. Acceleration, downswing, backswing, preparation, setting, and then downswing, not just back and down. Those three pieces feel to me that they're working the backswing we go up and then down and then up through impact to really accelerate this club we want to be pulling the club towards our center or with the shaft in the direction because this thing is traveling on an arc it has angular velocity and to increase angular velocity, we can't accelerate it from the end because we can't push the club. So in order to accelerate this, we have options. We could accelerate it by using the lever. And we also have another option. And that is, if we were to try to shorten the shaft, in other words, to pull against the shaft in the direction of the shaft away from the club head, this in turn will accelerate the club because we're trying, it's trying to shorten the shaft as we're pulling up on it or away from the club head. I will demonstrate this to you. So I'm going to let this club fall naturally as I hold it from this position and we'll see how far up it goes. So, you know, it's losing energy. So it got to about there. It didn't even get back to parallel. Of course it won't. Okay, now I want you to see, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time as it gets about right here, I'm going to begin pulling in this direction on the shaft and as it gets lower I'm going to be pulling eventually straight up where we would be at impact and you'll see that the club will accelerate quite a bit you see just that little bit of pulling up on it accelerates the club quite a bit where I can now the club is going well past parallel on the other side just with a slight upward movement as the club is going down I'm picking up on it pulling against the shaft and it accelerates the club. So we can use that concept as we swing. When we're getting through impact, we really want to feel that we're pulling, especially when the club is very close to impact, upwards out into our center, pulling on the shaft. The left hand is pulling in and as it's doing so, it's trying to shorten the shaft and accelerating the club through impact, like so. As we pull in, and you're not just pulling with your hand and your arm, you're pulling like you're snatching your child out of the water with your left hand with everything you have from the mouths of a shark or an alligator, you know, it's with everything from the ground, from your leg, everything, not just like this, but like you're trying to crank a lawnmower or something, just a big, strong pull at the end. That's going to throw the club around very strongly. 
pulling into you. So think about this as you're swinging. This is the directions in which you want to apply your energy in order to maximize the speed of the club head. I'm not trying to just move the shaft through the air, but rather I'm moving my body rotating and allowing the club, the shaft, or the grip to follow me. And then at the end, when it begins to unhinge, pulling everything into me and backwards, and that really accelerates the club. So when you're making your practice swings, practicing these motions, think about the notion of your swing being up. And by up, I don't literally mean pick it up. We've already talked about this, but as you're rotating backwards, the club will be traveling upwards. Even if it's going around, it's still gonna travel upwards. But we think going upwards with our body getting tall, just as if you were gonna jump really high, you're gonna go up and then sink down and then go back up. Because if you just sink down from here, it's not nearly as powerful as starting from a higher elevation, a higher point from the ground. So we would go up, then down, then back up. So the golf swing is gonna be very similar. We think on our back swing, we're going up and then down. And remember, as we go down, we're shifting our weight, our hip into the front, from the back, into the front leg. So up and then down and then up. Up, down, up. And I think when you do that a couple of times, you will see how when you go down, you're letting the club sink behind you and fold, hinge, up, down, and then up, and then it accelerates. The good, powerful golf swing, driver swing, is going to be long and flow like water, not quick and jerky. A good, powerful golf swing, a good, powerful drive doesn't come from strength, from squeezing your hands tightly. It comes from speed. And it's difficult to be fast if you're tense. So the speed is going to come from your bodily rotation, using the legs, moving from this hinged position at the top of your swing into the impact position, using the hips to do that very quickly, but smoothly, and then bracing for impact and allowing the club to catch up. That's a long flowy swing there. It's not going to be a good, a strong swing if I were very tense and gripping the club very tight and trying to hit it with my arms like that. That's not a very good swing. A much faster swing is this, where I'm using my body to let the club go, using my legs to help my hips move, and then an aggressive break at the end, allowing the club to pass. So think of your swing being long and flowy like a whip. We want to go long, I remember up, down, and then stop, up. Like this, this is nice, long, and flowy, a nice, powerful golf swing. Now I'm swinging slow enough there where I can actually stop the club through impact without going through my full finish. But if I put my full swing on it, even though I'm working backwards and pulling the club into me, allowing stopping. I really can't stop it because it's traveling so fast. But with this small swing here, I can stop it so that I can stop the club before it goes into my full follow through. So this is gonna be your tempo. Think of your tempo as being long and flowy and whip-like, not quick and jerky. Long and flowy and whip-like going up, down, and then up at impact. Again, for me, I feel like I start to initiate that stopping power and that upward movement when my hands are about somewhere towards my right thigh, maybe just outside my right thigh. Somewhere over here is when that's my cue to begin my, my deceleration to allow the club to catch up. Because if I don't, if I'm late, then the face will be open and I'll hit the ball to the right. Another pitfall we often find ourselves in when hitting the driver is there are some times we want to hit it extra hard, 
maybe it's a par five or maybe a long par four and you want to try to give it extra you want to hit it farther than you normally do or put some more speed into it than you normally do it's okay to want to hit it more let's say if we're normally swinging at 80 percent to go ahead and swing closer to a hundred percent with all of our power the problem is that most times when we try to do this we think of doing it with strength and moving our arms through the ball which is somewhat true because we definitely do want to move from this position to this position as fast as possible in the shortest amount of time but the problem is that doing so we normally tense up the arms and then we become slower because when you grip it tight and you tense up your muscles are not as fast anymore they're going to be much faster in a relaxed position when you're relaxed you're going to be able to move as quickly as possible i think of my position in my body of being very firm and solid at the torso in my back in my hips in my legs in the ground but from the arms down from my shoulder down i think of being kind of loose and relaxed i don't think of being very tense i'm just tight and firm enough to keep the club from slipping in my hand so i want to maintain a level of firmness but also a high level of relaxation so i can be fast and that being said when you're swinging this driver don't try to add extra to it understand that the motion that you're making when you rotate your body and turn is already a lot it's already a lot to turn your body from here to here there's no need to try to give it more just make that motion smoothly and transition well and that's enough if you try to give it extra usually we pull the club and it goes off of the plane and we miss hit it we miss strike it because we've, we've lost our positioning we've lost our posture and any number of other things that can go wrong when we're trying to hit it too hard understand that the motion that you're making to hit the golf ball the motion itself is enough there's no need to try to put extra on top of that if you want to hit it farther think about moving faster and smoother not trying to give it more with the arms or with the hands think about just getting there quicker smoother smoother is faster transitioning better moving your body better so when you're making these swings really focus on your body motions and the way that you're moving your body and not hitting the ball think about moving better and the club will be faster as a result from moving better the last thing we're going to talk about here in our part of our tempo is having a, a nice takeaway and return i suggest starting your takeaway with your legs with the feet rotation starts from the ground up and the downswing also starts from the ground up everything starts from the ground up so if i to take away my swing in my takeaway I don't want to move the club away from the driver first and essentially coil my shoulders and then my hips. That's just very unnatural. That would be like trying to throw a ball by moving the ball back and then my shoulders and then my hips and then trying to throw it. That's not the way we throw a ball or even move when we're doing something athletically. When we want to use rotational energy, we start with the ground. If I were going to throw a ball, I would start with the ground and I'd rotate my hips back first and then that then my upper body follows my shoulders follow and then the ball slings back and then when i go to throw it i start again with the feet and the hips and then the arm lags behind so the golf swing is the same way to help you get into that flow it's helpful just to get this hip to start going backwards and up and to the right just shifting your weight like this is going to get everything in motion going that direction because that is that's the initial coiling of your spring backwards going this way and then let it coil and then uncoil the other way by dipping down and then up just that motion is going to be quite powerful so remember on your takeaway i would suggest moving away from the ball with the body first not the hands and the arms this is going to be very difficult to get timing or any kind of fluidity with the club but if you turn your body and let the club flow then you kind of get to feel where it goes and where it relaxes and then return that into the ball this motion as opposed to this motion 
this motion is going to be much more powerful for me than this. When I move my body first and take the club back and I make that motion there with my hips signaling to my body that it's time to go back, the club lags behind a little bit. Notice that it lags behind because it's heavy on the end. So when I move my hands, the club is going to be a little bit behind me. How much lag you use, reverse lag we'll call it, depends on you and what you're comfortable with. But I recommend practicing this just to get a sense of tempo and timing, being kind of relaxed in the hands, letting it fold under like this and then flip back into your position and then hit it. This will help your timing and your tempo. So this little bit of reverse lag is not actually okay. I find it preferable to let the club go a little bit and it just gives me a little bit of time and feeling for the club head, the weight of it, where it is spatially in my backswing, just to let it settle into its place and then return it to the ball in a whip-like fashion. So become comfortable with that reverse lag. It can help your ball striking tremendously. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for the driver for right now. There are some other things that I do wanna go over that we'll cover in some future videos, so a little bit more details, but that in general is gonna put you on good course to be able to smash your driver. All these concepts together, the four videos, setup, posture, the foundations, your impact zone, hitting up on it, high launch, low spin, long carry, lots of roll. That's how we wanna hit it far. And then using the ground and using your legs and your hips to drive your rotation. When you can start using your legs, you'll really see a noticeable difference in your power. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching. You can always check two of my videos here and subscribe here. See you next time.